Hello all of you vaingloriously wonderful people. This is the Grotty X80 Proto, and I'm about to find out if it'll off-road. This is the second most voted for vehicle this week, coming in with six votes. You can vote for the vehicles that you want to see tested and will it off-road by clicking on the link in the description down below. So, the X80. I've talked a lot about this car, both in a garage tour video, and back when I uh, did the Will It Off-Road in the snow, the X80 was one of the vehicles that I tested in the snow. And I, every once in a while, I drive it during live streams, so people know that I love the looks and the sound of this car. I think both are just amazing. However, I do not like its handling dynamics. It's it's just a little too lightweight. As we can see there, it just kind of almost went into orbit. Um, not, I know that was an exaggeration, but it just bounces around a lot. Uh, it, it, little things upset it, and, and it makes it unpleasant to drive because of that, which is a shame for a car that looks and sounds this great and, well, costs this much. But it's lightweight means that I don't have to get on the throttle too heavy to get a decent time. What I do have to do though is make sure that I'm staying off the throttle as much as possible. Because if I get too much speed, the slightest little bump will send me flying off of the side of Mount Chiliad. And that would not be happy times for Brandon. As he refers to himself in the third person. I thought about doing that for an entire video once, just to see how many people I could annoy. But, yeah, the X80 is all-wheel drive, so it has the grip that it needs. Uh, it, it does step its back end out now and then if you get too hard on the power, but it's that light weight that keeps it from getting a better time. I mean, I was pushing this car as hard as I felt comfortable pushing it on this type of terrain, which is to say, not very comfortable at all, because, I mean, just look at it. Good God, that was some massive uh, understeer there. I mean, he hasn't turning radius of a freaking skyscraper. But, uh, yeah, it's just this car, just, I love it and I hate it all at the same time. Which is just so frustrating because I typically love all things grotty in this game. I mean, I have them all in a garage. One garage. Everything garage. Garotti. Grotti. I'm trying to English today. But, it is making a pretty decent run up, if not the best for a supercar. At least it's getting there in a good time. Uh, anything under three minutes is good, and this is definitely gonna come in under three minutes. And check out this spectacular finish because of the lightweight. We're down at two minutes, 41 seconds flat. Will it off-road? Yeah, it will. It's just not much fun. Um, it's just because of the lightweight with that finish. Oh my god, that finish was incredible. So let's take it back down the mountain. Uh, thing has amazing brakes, has the grip, but again, the lightweight is going to be the liability. You have a lot of people on top of the mountain tonight. Just didn't want to fly off that first pit, so I went extra slow. And I'm just going as slow as possible here. Managed to just barely bump the side, and because of that lightweight, it nearly flipped over. I mean, look at that. That was, what, I was going 20 miles an hour over that bump, and it got massive amounts of air. It's just so frustrating because of that. And that's all there really is to say about the car. It, it's just not... I mean, I know lightness is the thing you want in a supercar, but... I don't know. Also, maybe not... Oh, I don't know. Maybe doing barrel rolls every time you hit a curb would be nice. I and mean, look at that. I can't have any speed going downhill whatsoever. Of course, it uh, doesn't help that I've got Commander behind me in a brawler, knowing that he has uh, to deal with the brakes of the brawler. So I know that I can't stop, and I know i got to keep some speed up, or else I'll get right off the road by a massively heavy off-roader. So, yeah, there's that following me and keeping me moving forward here. Big jump. There's a dune buggy off to the side. That's because Shacknader was in a dune buggy, and if you have a dune buggy out, one will spawn there pretty much 24 hours a day, I think. Oh, nice and flat over that jump. That was that was well done, actually. 
I do love the act air, uh, active aerodynamic spoiler on this thing. I like that it not only functions as an air brake, but that uh, that when you turn, it, it flaps around to, to give the downforce to one side and not the other. It's just a brilliant thing. I don't know if the Ferrari the prototype that it's based on does that or not. I can't remember. Been a long time since I looked at it. I don't even remember what that Ferrari is called. Oh, hello, tree. Oh, there we go. There's those brakes I was talking about. We nearly had a massive collision. <laughs> Oh, that was a grand entrance by Clander. Bouncing all around, and of course that lightweight's gonna bite me in the ass right here, where, yeah, it just kind of started doing a slide to the side there, a four-wheel slide, and couldn't really recover. Too much speed on the recovery back up. Sent me not only uh, way too far, but also in the wrong direction. So kind of straighten back out. We're down on asphalt, where this car does a little bit better, but not much. Excuse the frequent pauses that I have. I have the hiccups. It's always frustrating when I, just as I start one, I uh, over, I have the hiccups. We're down to two minutes, 52 seconds, and I somehow killed V-Boss without touching him. So let's go to back to the top of Mount Chiliad. Weird things are happening in, in this little bit off-road. Let's see what type of damage the X80 takes, which we, if you've ever driven one of these, you already know that the paint scratches and that's it, and the lights break and all those break. I don't even think that I've ever seen one of these without a door on it. I just don't. It's just, there's, they just didn't model any type of damage in it at all, other than the paint scratch. It doesn't even get minor dents. Some of the newer cars will get tiny little dents in them, but this doesn't even get that. I couldn't even manage to break the spoiler. I don't know if you can break the spoiler in this car. I know you can on the T20. And then if you do break it, it, it acts as though you no longer have that traction benefit from the spoiler. But I have never been able to break the spoiler on the X80. I've actually tried it a few times. So, I don't know that it can be broken. Oh, that was an Impressive barrel roll. Well done there. Coming up to the very bumpy, very muddy bit where the lightweight cars just get battered. As I hear an explosion rumble in the distance. Don't know what that was about. I'm gonna remember to not have so many people in the lobby when I record these because things start getting a little chaotic. Yeah, look at this thing just bouncing all around. It's got impressive grip though. I mean, it really does. There we go. And up around the wood pile, pointing in the wrong direction because I was in the air and couldn't turn. And we are down one minute, 44 seconds. So let's take a look at the lack of damage. Most lights, most windows. That's it. If only real life supercars were this sturdy. We because they tend to just, you know, shatter into pieces when they get back to it. And okay, I guess the paint's a little scratched up, but that's it. So let's move on to the next vehicle. The Pimp Van is back, bitches. That's right, the Fabian Minivan Custom. Coming in with 10, no, sorry, 12 votes this week. And of course, don't forget to vote for the vehicles that you want to see featured in Will It Off-Road by clicking on the link in the description down below. So, uh... Everybody by now knows the backstory on Pimp Van. And if you don't, uh, go watch the Will It Off-Road video for the regular Vapid Minivan, not the custom, which is the original Pimp Van. This is Pimp Van 2. Um, and you'll find the story of Pimp Van and why I have dollar sign wheels and so much chrome and all that. Uh, at least this one does look a little bit better than the original Pimp Van. The original Pimp Van shall always always be a treasured vehicle among the vainglorious everyone who has ridden in it has had the the honor of riding on it loves and adores it in both versions the pit van has decent power great traction because it is all-wheel drive and unlike the x80 it actually manages to not go flying bajillion miles in the air over the tiniest bumps as well it's Fat ass fan. 
So this is going to be a pretty decent run. And as I've mentioned over the past couple weeks, I have begun pushing the vehicles a lot harder. Now that I've gone up and down this mountain, you know, gosh, coming up on 150 times now, I I'm just a lot more confident, even if I'm in a vehicle that I don't drive all that much. Hitman is struggling to find the right gear there. But in vehicles I don't even drive a lot, I'm still a lot more confident than I used to be. Just because I know pretty much where every bump and rock and bit of dirt is all the way up and down this path. Kind of become the pro on driving up the side of Mount Chiliad. I mean, I guess if you got to be a pro at something, that's not a bad one to be a pro at. You know. And I'm not a try hard about it. But... I do want to push these things to their extreme. I just want to start seeing better and better times. And we're going to see a really good time from Pimp Van, it looks like, because we're pretty near the top and just past that two-minute mark. This could come in faster than some super and sports cars, which will be pretty fucking impressive. I mean, let's admit it. This is a minivan. It does have better performance than the regular minivan, so it is quicker. Um, and as I mentioned, the all-wheel drive would, well, the regular minivan's all-wheel drive, too, but the all-wheel drive does help a lot. Because when the back wheels want to start spinning, the front wheels are still there getting gripped to pull you forward to mitigate all of that. So, yeah, this just might do under three minutes. It's going to be close. It's going to be very close, in fact. Coming around for the final climb here. Right off the side of that. Look at that. That was amazing. And we're up. Two minutes, 57 seconds. Will it off-road? <laughs> Fuck yeah, it's a bit van. What else do you expect from it? But that means we now have to take it back down the mountain. And see how it does in a controlled descent. And, well, the weight will be an issue here. Uh, that, that's going to be the main problem. The weight and people forgetting that they're not supposed to use chat when I'm recording. I mean, they can. It's just, I ask them not to if, if they're going to come to my lobby that I'm in. And I always offer, hey, I will go to my own lobby. I'll just be by myself. It's not a problem. They're like, no, 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 it's cool. I, I won't die. I won't start any jobs. I won't, I won't chat. Well, someone forgets. And I'm just not going to give them any glory. It'll just be blurred out here in a minute when it happens. But uh, there we go. The pimp van gets into some trouble there started sliding and oh almost off the side of the mountain managed to save it if this would have been a real wheel drive vehicle only uh, i would have been screwed right there but thankfully i was able to get the grip that i needed and keep this thing going back down the mountain back end is stepping out a lot on me though quite a bit in fact but i am once again trying to get the best possible time out of here to really just push this thing to its edge. It's more about the ascent for numbers, but I still wanted to see what I could do with oh, nice bump. With the downhill part, because I've done this vehicle now, what? Gosh, it's been in the garage tour, it's been a little bit off-road in the snow, I don't remember if it was this one or the regular one. Um, and of course we've seen the regular one a couple different times as well. Once again, chat popping up. Once again, it's blurred out. Because I just don't want the person who forgot to be able to see their name in a YouTube video. I'm being a prick about it, I know. But everybody that I play with knows. And they just kept doing things that just really annoyed me. Matter of fact, I, I had said that I was just going to go to my own lobby right after recording this. But then they decided to leave. So, oh, none. We spun out bit of an issue, but easy enough recovery. Continuing to push on forward here. Approaching the tree of mini crashes. Let's see if we survive. Yes, we avoided the tree of mini crashes. Last little bit of dirt here, little curvy bit. Bringing us back down to the asphalt. I handled a nice uneven, uh, approach there. Did just fine with it. A little bit of oversteer out of the corner. But listen to that pimp van run, man. Best vehicle in the game. 
And we are down. Two minutes. 44 seconds, I believe it said. I've got the wrong timer on there, and I'll have to fix it. But that means we have to take it back to the top of Mount Chiliad, throw it off the side of the mountain, and see what's what. Of course, uh, the minivan itself has been in the game since it launched, so it has uh, good damage models. So therefore, the minivan custom inherits those. As you can see, it's already uh, said goodbye to a few body panels there. Looks like the bumper, the rear door, and a fender already gone. They're getting down the mountain with much more speed than the van itself can manage. And of course, like a lot of the heavier vehicles, it wants to go ass first. But you know what? When your ass looks that great, why wouldn't you come up first with that? If my ass looked that good, I'd walk into every room backwards. Trying to keep it turned around just doesn't really work, though. So gotta go frontwards or forwards. Yeah, frontwards. Right? We're gonna go forwards here for a minute. Stuck on a boulder, trying to get some traction, found it, and now we continue on. <laughs> Hitting everything with this van. It's not that big. I mean, it is big, but it's not as big as some of the other vehicles that usually get caught up on all that type of stuff, so. It's kind of surprising to see uh, the pimp van struggle here. Oh, some impressive air time there. Well done again, pimp van. I can't say enough good things about this van. Into the muddy, bumpy bits, maybe. Possibly. No, into a uh, metal divider instead. Support column, not divider. And boulder. Jumped right over quite nicely. Find a little bit of dirt down here. Coming up for our climb at the wood pile. And we are down. One minute, 48 seconds. Let's take a look at the damage here. All the lights are gone. All the windows are gone. The front bumper door, or rear door, and the fenders are gone. Has pretty significant body damage and some bent wheels. Guys, don't forget to vote for the vehicles that you want to see in Bullet Off-Road by clicking on the link in the description down below. And until next time, I'm Brandon reminding you to stay vainglorious.